All right, guys, I think everything's all set now, uh, and we're here for another live uh, webinar session with forexbolt.com. Uh, my name is uh, Damien, and today I'm going to conduct uh, a webinar for you guys. I really want to ask you if you can see me and hear me, simply uh, use the question section to type it in, to say, yes, Damien, we can see you, we can hear you, so I will know that everything's fine with my setup. I will uh, really appreciate this. Simply throw uh, like a, a like a quick like a quick answer for me. All right, we have few people already. Okay. All right, checking if everything is all set. All okay. Says Julian, that's a good thing. Uh, this means that you are guys able to see me and eventually hear me. That's a good thing. Uh, whoops. All right. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to uh, I'm going to go through some important economic events that we observed uh, during the week to discuss them. Also, I will share some valuable information with you, of course. Uh, the most important thing that I want to tell you guys is that we're currently running a giveaway for 2,000 American dollars, which means that we're going to sponsor one Forex trader in an Axie Trader Forex trading account, uh, meaning that the winner of the giveaway is going to win the 2,000 American dollars for trading in an Axie Trader account. Then you can trade with this money. So, uh, if you want to participate in the giveaway, you can find it at uh, www.forexbolt.com slash web uh, slash giveaway, I apologize for this, uh, where you can participate in the giveaway by completing uh, some of the entry options. There are many, many, many entry options, and the best thing is that there are also uh, daily options, uh, daily entry options available, meaning uh, that you can come day by day, every day until the end of the giveaway to complete more and more entries, to collect more and more entry points, and to increase your chance of winning, which is uh, the best thing of uh, our giveaway, uh, I believe, <laughs> of course. Uh, and the giveaway, I believe, is going to run until December something. Actually, I currently I cannot recall, but when you go to www.forexbolt.com slash giveaway, you will see uh, the beginning date, the end date, the terms and conditions, and whatsoever, everything that you will need to know about this giveaway. All right, so what do we have to discuss uh, in terms of economic events this week? I'm currently scrolling through my economic calendar. Uh, all right, this week. All right, cool. Hmm. Yeah, the first thing that I'm going to start, it's, it was from uh, Tuesday. Uh, this, is, was, this was a release uh, from the United States existing home sales at better than expected uh, uh, number of 5.48 million on 5.42 million, meaning that the, like the difference is slight. This did not impact probably a lot uh, the American dollar Forex-related uh, uh, Forex uh, pairs. Also, we had some speeches, of course, Fed Chair Yellen, also the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi had a speech on, mon on Monday, yeah, exactly. Uh, on Wednesday, we had the, the core durable goods from the United States at 0.4% on 0.5% uh, forecast, worse than expected. Crude oil inventories at the better than expected rate of minus 1.855 million barrels on minus 1.545 million barrels, meaning that the crude oil inventories in the United States are even less than, uh, I mean, even less than expected, not even less, but they're like lacking even more because this is a negative value, meaning that the inventory is negative, uh, missing. This is a scarce. Uh, also Thursday is today. We had the German gross domestic product at 0.8% as expected, matching the forecast and the previous value, meaning that uh, Germany is growing on a consistent basis of 0.8%, which is a pretty good thing for Germany. Uh, however, we should not forget that there are some political issues in Germany currently because the, uh, 
uh, the party of uh, Angela Merkel currently cannot find support for uh, creating a government which causes some instability in the country. Correct me if I am wrong. Uh, what else did we have uh, today? Yeah, there it is. Uh, gross domestic product from the United Kingdom uh, year over year for the third quarter at 1.5% as expected and as the previous value and for the third quarter, quarter over quarter, 0.44%. For the third quarter, on 0.4%. Forecasting previous value. Again, as Germany, uh, Great Britain is growing on a consistent basis on 1.5% per year if we measure it from quarter three to quarter three the next year. Uh, also, today we had the core retail sales in Canada at 0.3% on 1% forecast. This is like a pretty like decent difference about a difference of 0 0.7 so this is something that probably had impact uh, all right guys so uh, I suggest that we proceed with uh, our webinar today where I'm going to talk about psychological levels in forex trading uh, also uh, what uh, yeah by the way can you can you guys see like uh, my screen with the forex vault logo that that would be a, a great thing yeah I think you're you're able to see it yeah Actually, because I have like a small window with audience view, which is a, a good thing. So what I'm going to do now is simply to proceed to our disclaimer, and I would ask you guys just for uh, like uh, for a minute to to spend some time going through it, and also I'm going to turn off my face because probably my face is on the way uh, of the disclaimer. So my camera is currently being turned off. All right, and now you're only left with my pretty voice. Great. Uh, simply like uh, spend like uh, 30, 40, or 50 minutes quickly go through this disclaimer so you will know that uh, Forex Ball PTY Limited is a fully regulated company financially and legally. And for everything that we're, we're doing uh, at our website and our academy, uh, we're 100% supervised by the respective authorities. So we conform to uh, everything in terms of. Uh, in terms of a financial and legal rules. Uh, all right, guys. Now I suggest that uh, we proceed to the webinar and to our topic. So I'm simply going to go to the next slide, which is the title of the webinar, which is psychological levels in forex trading. Uh, all right, this is a pretty interesting topic because, in my opinion, psychological levels are an extremely important part of technical analysis in forex trading. Uh, also, during this webinar, I would like to encourage you to per participate in the webinar and like fully to uh, ask questions whenever you have something in mind or whenever you don't understand something or whenever you have doubts about something. I would love to to like uh, interrupt uh, my, my speech for uh, like a minute and to answer every question I receive uh, in the questions section. So uh, all right guys, now I'm going to proceed uh, with the table of content of, uh, of our webinar. Uh, the plan of the webinar today, we're going to start with like a brief explanation about the psychological levels in forex trading. Then I will go to the types of psychological levels, the ones that I find to be very important, uh, which are like round numbers, Fibonacci levels, and big moving averages. Uh, also, I will proceed with round numbers, explaining some of the basic uh, round numbers psychological levels on the chart that you can meet. Then I will proceed with Fibonacci levels. Uh, of course, 61.8 level, the 38.2 level, the most important levels in my opinion. And also then I will continue with big moving averages like the 100 period, the 200 period moving average and the 500 period moving average. And then I will proceed uh, with discussing some big forex charts where I believe that psychological levels are like, uh, like have a bigger emphasis and are more important. Then I will continue with uh, some practical examples, and then um, then we can simply switch to the questions and answers section of this webinar. All right, guys. So first, let's start. What are psychological levels in forex trading? So the important thing that you need to know, and you probably all of you know, is that the, there is like a big psychological factor uh, that determines the price of every forex pair. 
actually forex pairs are like moved by like uh, simple economic and, mar and market rules like the supply and the demand meaning that uh, the more supply of a currency the lower its price it is and the more demand of a currency the higher the price it is so this means that supply and the demand is actually uh, pretty determined is determined uh, by the market participants that are interested in the respective forex pair and who are the market market participants so these could be like all like uh, global banks uh, investing funds uh, even retail traders like all of us guys governments as well and such big institutions that are involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, currency uh, exchanges so this means that uh, currency prices are actually determined by the the altitude of the different market participants right because uh, like the more market participants are interested in a certain currency the higher volatility there will be meaning that if uh, most of the market participants buy one of the currencies available on the market uh, then its price will definitely uh, its price will definitely increase uh, at the same time uh, forex pairs are also subject of a uh, global change of altitudes because this is like the logical outcome of what I'm currently talking about uh, meaning that whenever the global altitude is changing this is normal to lead to a change in the price of the respective forex pairs so what does this mean it means that the forex pairs and the prices of the forex pairs are determined by the global interest and the overall trading masses that are participants in the market so this is where the the well-known saying comes from the trend is your friend you all know about that right that is correct because if you manage to move with the global mass meaning with the trend this is very likely to put you in a trade that is in your favor exactly and the thing that I would like to say related to the global masses and the psychological factor and the global change of attitudes is that whenever there is a like a factor that is well known to everyone on the chart like a psychological level like a level on the chart of support or a resistance level well if this level has like psychological factor it is very likely to uh, to become like a turning point or to cause even a bigger move on the chart in case it gets broken and in this relation this is something that I like to say usually the bigger the level the stronger its impact is likely to be in my opinion so imagine that you have a level on the chart that everyone is observing for example let's say what is an important level about the euro dollar for example well in my opinion the most important level for the euro dollar although during the last year it got a bit not a bit but a lot out of the focus is the parity level this is the the parity level means the level of one where one euro is going to be exchanged for one dollar so this is the parity level so this is the biggest level for the euro dollar and this is the level that is likely to have the biggest psychological factor for the euro dollar in case the euro dollar approaches this level again why so because for example a lot of people investors global banks governments and other market participants don't believe that the euro dollar could actually go below uh, one dollar for one euro this means that these market participants are very likely eventually to cover most of their trades or deals or whatsoever which will cause like a pullback of the euro dollar meaning that the price is very likely to bounce through this level since it's a such a big psychological level where everyone freaks out whenever the price uh, approaches like the area around this level this is very likely to cause the global change of altitude.
However, this is the case of the euro dollar. I mean, nobody can guarantee you that every time the price approaches, for example, the one point level or the one point zero three or four or whatsoever it reached, like at the end of 2016, uh, nobody can guarantee you that the price will always bounce from this level. But the thing that we can mention is that uh, this level is definitely an important. Uh, factor on the chart and whenever the price approaches it, it could definitely have like a certain meaning in, in many cases. Alright, now let's discuss some types of psychological levels on the chart. I'm going to go through three important types of psychological levels today. The first ones are the round numbers, uh, as I said. Then I'm going to go through uh, Fibonacci levels. And then I'm going to go through big moving averages uh, on the chart. And now I suggest that we continue with the first type of psychological levels of this webinar. And these are the round numbers. I'm going to go through three types of round numbers today. The first type of round numbers are the whole numbers. Hmm. And notice that with below whole numbers, I've like uh, given some, I, I've given some suggestions about uh, like uh, like an example of whole numbers uh, where they're actually applicable for respective forex pairs. Notice that at the side of the right side of the, the, the two words like whole numbers, you will see the x's, one x, two x's, and three x's. This responds to uh, like a whole number with one digit, a whole number with two digits, and a whole number with three digits. Let's start below. As I said, the one level is like the biggest psychological levels uh, for level for the forex pair euro dollar, and this is a whole number because it starts with one and there is nothing behind the decimal, meaning that the number is round. And this is like the biggest level because uh, it is like the most rounded number available on the chart. And as I said, the bigger, the stronger in terms of psychological levels in forex trading. So, uh, the one level is applicable currently for the euro dollar and for the American dollar Swiss franc, which is being traded at 0 0.90 something below the one level. Then the two level, for example, is applicable for the euro New Zealand dollar for its pair. The three, uh, the three level uh, responds to the American dollar uh, Israeli shekel for its pair. I think this is how it's called in English, Sheko, yeah. And then the four level is currently applicable uh, for the American dollar Turkish lira that is being traded, I believe, around 3.90 something. And the American dollar Israeli Sheko is being traded at 3.5, I believe. But I decided to use it as an example for the three level since it is still close to the three level. And for example, another whole number is 100 level. And this is like a response to forex pairs that involve uh, currencies like the Japanese yen, uh, which are traded like with three symbols prior the decimal. So the hundred level of the American dollar Japanese yen forex pair, which I believe is currently being traded around 110 eventually. So the hundred level uh, is a is a whole number psychological level for the American dollar Japanese yen uh, forex pair. All right, notice that the 100 level still has like zeros after the decimal, but in, in, uh, in, the, in the 100 level of the American dollar Japanese yen, also there are important the levels that come prior the decimal because, for example, 123 is not a round number for the American dollar Japanese yen. A round number will be the 100 level, the 200 levels, the 300 level, 400 level, and 500 level. Meaning that in order to identify round number level, we need uh, like uh, in total four zero symbols. <laughs> in the first four examples, these zero symbols were after the decimal. In the last example of the American dollar Japanese yen, the, the zero symbols are at the left and at the right side of the decimal, which still makes the four zero symbol. Another whole number level will be like, uh, uh, what can I say? Like the 15 level, but currently uh, I, I do not recall of an example for a forex pair. Let's say a 15 level where it is like 15 
0.000. If the price is currently being traded around 14.93, let's say something like that. This means that the 15 level will be a whole number uh, psychological level. The next level that I'm going to discuss are the double zero levels. The double zeros. These levels, uh, yeah, these levels are related to uh, to levels that contain a couple zeros at the end of the price of the forex pair. This level could be 1.15 for the uh, for the for the euro dollar forex pair, or 1.16, or 1.74 for other forex pairs, or 1.98. Notice that in all of the examples, we have, again, we have like round numbers. Uh, however, the second, uh, the two like symbols after the decimal are like random numbers. So, for example, I'm going to pop up my chart in order to show you like important round number level of the Euro dollar Forex chart. All right. I think you are all able to see my chart now. Uh, all right. Let me switch to... Because I have like a lot of forex pairs over here. All right, let's switch over here. All right, let's check this out. All right, what is an important round number level for the euro dollar curve? Notice that it's being traded around 1.1845, meaning that the 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 double zero important level for the euro dollar is located at 1.19, which is which has been tested here. Whoops, here it is, 1.19 over here which has been tested here, here, and here as a support. Then the price broke it, decreased to the double zero level of 1.17, psychological level, broke that level, the price reached the double zero level at 1.16, then the price broke the 1.17 level uh, over here as a resistance, then the price turned this level into a support right over here, and then the price increased again, and we have the euro dollar is this like a high? No, that high is not broken yet. Approaching the the psychological uh, level in the area of 1.19, right over here, a double zero level. Now I'm going to switch to the next type of round numbers, which are the 50s, because I nearly <laughs> strike that topic while approaching the chart. The 50s are the levels that actually uh, that actually uh, have a Five in the third symbol that comes after the decimal. Here it is. For example, the levels that I gave example about are 1.1950. These are simply like random numbers that I added like uh, to, to my presentation. I mean, I do not associate these levels currently with uh, anything. So let's say 1.1950, 1.5650, 1 1.3450, 50 again, 1.4950. 1.9950, 1.2150, and so on and so forth uh, until uh, whenever you want. Uh, the thing is that the 50s levels are like the halves of the double zeros because at the double zeros we had double zeros at the end, and then the last zero is like uh, split on half, and we have a five over there, which creates the 50s at the end. And now I'm going back to the euro dollar chart to show you an important 50 level that the price is currently approaching. Here it is, 1.1850. So this is an example of a 50 level that the price is currently approaching. However, the 50s are like the less, uh, the psychological levels that are likely to have smaller impact on the chart. But notice that the price touched the 1.1850 level, this 50 level, and then it, it is currently testing it again as a resistance. And the price definitely shows hesitation uh, in this area. Take a look. We had a trend which is gradually slowing down and the price attempts to create a horizontal move. So eventually, if the price bounces from this level, then there is a decent chance that we see an eventual decrease. And then if the price breaks the 1.1850 level, then there is a chance that the price runs in the same direction and eventually approaches the double zero level at 1.19 right over here. All right, so pretty much this is about the round numbers level.
So I'm going to switch now to the next slide, which uh, presents to you the Fibonacci levels. Probably all of you guys are familiar with the Fibonacci level because I remember myself like doing a, a webinar about the Fibonacci levels, um, as well as uh, uh, I've written some articles about the Fibonacci levels. And in general, we spend a lot of time on Fibonacci levels. However, the thing is that uh, there are two most important levels uh, in the Fibonacci sequence. Notice that next to the title, the subtitle Fibonacci levels, I place like the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence where we add every previous number to the current one to get the next one. So we have a one, then one again, then one plus one makes two, then two plus one makes three, three plus two makes five, five plus three makes eight, uh, eight plus five makes 13, 13 plus eight makes 21, 21 plus 13 makes uh, 34, 34 plus 21 gives you 55 and so on and so forth until eternity. This is exactly how the Fibonacci uh, sequence is being built. The important thing of the Fibonacci sequence is the distance between each numbers. The distance, I mean, measured with numbers. And the Fibonacci sequence, uh, like, proves that whenever the, the sequence is built, each number takes 61.8% of the number that comes next in the row. Meaning that, let's say, 13 is approximately 61.8% uh, of 21. And 21 is approximately 61.8% of 34. And 34 is approximately 61.8% of 55. And this lasts until eternity. The 38.2 level comes same way as 61.8, however, when you compare the number to the number that stays two positions to the right. For example, 13 is 38.2% of 21. And also 13, oh, actually, no, that was wrong. <laughs> 13 is 38.2% uh, of 34. And then 21 is 38.2% of 55. And this is how the Fibonacci sequence is built and how the percentages are, are, are being received. But how do these percentages apply to the psychology of the Forex trader? Well, this is uh, a very interesting theory and I find a lot of meaning in it. And the thing is that this sequence is not present only in, um, in numbers. But this sequence could be found anywhere around the nature. And the reason for this is that the whole universe is built based on this sequence. Uh, a lot of uh, people call it the golden ratio or the God's ratio or whatsoever because this is how uh, like the universe and the earth and everything else is structured based on this ratio. And this is how the human eye perceives things because uh, if you see something built in this sequence uh, taking into consideration these percentages that I just got from the sequence uh, the human eye perceives this object as something pretty something interesting something that could impact something else in some way uh, this is why a lot of companies use these sequences to build their logos like like the biggest and the brightest example is the Apple logo which is fully conformed to the to the Fibonacci uh, ratios, uh, also known as the golden ratio, and so on and so forth. Uh, so these levels are also important in forex trading because since the human eye observes these levels constantly, unconsciously, like uh, subconsciously, I mean not unconsciously, subconsciously, the human eye has adapted to react uh, to these percentages. For example, if the price decreases, for example, with 61.8% compared to a previous trend, it is very likely that a lot of people, uh, uh, a lot of people uh, think uh, subliminally that the price has decreased pretty enough and it is time for a change. And this 
uh, is likely to result in a change in the decision of some of the market participants. For example, uh, the chart you're currently looking at is, I think this is the daily chart of the euro dollar, and it represents a pretty recent situation. I extracted it, I extracted it today. So we have a bullish trend, which is like uh, pretty visible at the left side of the chart. Notice that the red tiny line, the interrupted line over here, uh, embraces this whole trend from its bottom to its top. Then we have the two important Fibonacci levels visualized with black, the 38.2 level and the 61.8 level. Notice that the price tests the 38.2 level as a support. It creates a slight bounce, then the price slices through the 38.2 level because it did not manage to support the price action. However, we definitely saw a reaction with this level. Then the price decreases to the 61.8 level, tests it as a support, bounces in bullish direction, going in the 38.2 level area again. Then we see another uh, swing on the chart in various direction. And the price tests a couple of times the 68, uh, 61.8 Fibonacci level. Uh, and then after bouncing from this level, every time from the 61.8 Fibonacci level, the price increases to the 38.2 level, and we have something like a range that I have displayed in the red rectangle you see uh, on the chart. Notice that the price bounces up and down and up and down and up and down and so on and so forth until the price breaks the 38.2 level, turns it into a support, and then shoots up in bullish direction. So this is how strong, like, psychological Fibonacci levels could be in forex trading. And now I'm going to move to the next subtopic of this webinar, which is the moving averages, which I want to discuss. So the most important moving averages, like the, the biggest moving averages, the most psychological moving averages are the 100 period moving average, which is relatively weak, the 200 period moving average, which is like a medium strength, and the 500 period uh, moving average. Notice that I have presented like a like a situation related to uh, each of these uh, moving averages. For example, the 100 period moving average, which I have displayed like a, with a, with a with a simple moving average actually with red. This is a simple moving average. Notice that at the left side of the price simply like goes above and below, above and below that moving average. Then suddenly the price breaks it, breaks it in bearish direction, tests it as a resistance and bounces in bearish direction again. Then the price changes its direction. However, the moving average managed to, to resist the price action once. Then we see another attempt, the price breaks it, turns the moving average into a support and the price shoots up in bullish direction. Oops, sorry about that. I changed my slide uh, by mistake. Then the 200 period moving average. It starts, it's a little bit like, it, it's twice more smoother than the 100 period moving average, of course, because it takes into consideration more periods. Uh, I've marked it with, with the blue, like the bottom left chart you see. Notice that the price starts the same way, like jumps up and down, up and down, up and down. Uh, however, it, uh, it shows like a more more certain of an altitude on the chart. And the reason for this is that on this moving average, we have more tops and bottoms on the chart that conform to this, uh, to this moving average, right? Uh, for example, at the most left part, leftmost part of the chart, we have a top, a small top that conforms to this level. Then we have some hesitation, and then we have a bottom that conforms to this level then comes some hesitation again, and before the price creates like a more certain breakout in bearish direction, we have one, two, three, and four like bottoms at this moving average, meaning that it acts as a psychological support on the chart. The price then breaks it as a support, uh, shoots down, then tests it as a resistance, returns to test it as a resistance, another bearish trend comes, then the price returns, tests it as a resistance again, bounces down, breaks it as a resistance, tests it as a support, and shoots up. 
Uh, notice that the emphasis of this moving average is a little bit like uh, more uh, a, a little bit bigger is what I'm trying to say because a breakout or a bounce related to this moving average is likely to have more pressure uh, on the price action and it is likely to have like a, uh, eventually better impact uh, on uh, any eventual trades because the, the fake outs and the fake breakouts with a bigger moving average are likely to be like uh, of course less. Uh, then the 500 period moving average. Notice that we have the absolutely same situation as the last uh, two charts. However, this time I've used the 500 period simple moving average uh, which I've marked with purple on the chart. Notice that the price does not manage to break this moving average as a resistance at all at the left side of the chart. It even acts as a pretty strong resistance and the reason for this is that the psychological factor of the 500 period moving average is the biggest of course compared to the 100 period and the 200 period moving average. So the purple arrows you see on the chart shows you every time that the price tests this simple moving average as a resistance. And notice that every time the price bounces in bearish direction. The last time at the last, the rightmost arrow, even the bounce is like biggest. Price shoots down, however, then it returns, breaks the level in bullish direction and shoots up like more categorically. Now I'm going to switch to the next slide I have for you guys and it is related to charts. And the reason for this is that charts are also very important when approaching psychological levels. Because after all, trades are taken on charts, right? And for this uh, for this subtopic of this webinar, we can also use the rule, the bigger, the stronger. Because, uh, for example, you, you cannot approach like, a, like a, a whole number psychological level, like the one level. You cannot trade it like on the five minute chart. This level is being traded like long term. Because uh, on the one minute chart, if the price is like constantly moving around the one level, on the one minute chart, you will see that the price constantly goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, breaks it. And this creates a lot of fake outs uh, on the chart. All right, so what is the thing with the charts? As I said, trades are taken on the charts. This is the reason we need also to approach uh, charts as a factor, as a psychological factor, uh, I mean as a factor that is related to psychology and psychological levels in forex trading. The biggest thing is to be, the biggest trick is to be able to determine which level on which chart to trade because some levels are too small for certain charts and some levels are too big for other charts. And this is why currently I've like outlined uh, the four most important uh, charts that are related in my opinion to the levels that we discussed, uh, except the moving average levels because moving average levels they do not like uh, uh, on every, whenever you change the chart you also change the moving average line because it takes period different way. It takes the periods uh, in a different way. Uh, so, uh, for example, let's say, um, what level? All right, let me pop up my chart. I think, I think actually the next slide is related to practical examples, so we can simply like switch to my chart uh, anyway. All right, so there you go, a chart. I'm, I'm going to open a clean chart because I think I have like saved a white chart somewhere. Yeah, here it is with the moving average, the chart that I was discussing. Here it is. All right, now I am going to remove that level. Also, I am going to scroll back the chart. This is the daily chart of the euro dollar. I'm going to start with this chart. And in the meantime, guys, if you have another chart that you would like to discuss with me and to find some psychological levels, feel free to mention it. And uh, I will show you that I can find psychological levels and I can demonstrate you the way they work in every other chart. In the meantime, I have a blank chart currently at the euro dollar. And I will see if some of the tops or bottoms are related to some of the, let's say, the 
the whole numbers, the double zeros, or the 50s on the chart, or some psychological, uh, other psychological levels like the Fibonacci numbers, for example. All right, let's start with this top that is from, what is this? Um, this is November 2016, here it is. Oh, is that a black, is that a white level? Uh, let me change the color. All right, here it is. This level, I think it's 1.14. Oh, oops, actually no 1.14, I mean 1. Point, uh, actually 1.11 or 1. Point, no, 1.12 is too big. So this might be taken as a 50 level, or no. No, this cannot be taken as a 50 level. The reason for this is that this candle, notice the big gap over here, the big gap. This means that uh, uh, this is like the price switching from the first, from one week to another week, meaning that the level should be located some, somewhere in the middle of the two, of the two uh, candles between the two weeks, because this makes more sense. Uh, so what do we have here? 1.11. I think 1.11 is, is is relevant to our case eventually. And notice that this level being tested one time here, second time here, third time here. Then the price touches it one more time over here. Then the price breaks it, turns it into a resistance. The price shoots down. Now let's try the next level. What is this? Uh, I think this is around 1.08, here it is. And this level is a couple times tested, here and here. Notice, one time, second time right over here. And this is a double zero level, 1.08, zero, zero. This is how double zero levels are being taken. Uh, okay. And it is normal to find double zeros on the daily chart. However, if you're approaching a weekly or a monthly chart, the double zero level might be smaller, might be too small. Because for example, here we have 1.4, which is actually another type of a level. It is not a double zero because it has like three zeros. This could be called a triple zero level. Uh, however, I decided not to cover it because uh, like the, the most important and most commonly matter, like the double zeros and the 50s. But this is another round number level, which is like in terms of emphasizing between uh, the, the whole numbers and the double zero levels. This level has three zeros and it is another round number psychological level. The price shoots down, creates this range over here. What is the scope of this range? Let's take a look. Uh, we have accumulation of some tops over here and here, so I believe that this is around 1.15, which is another double zero level. However, if we go down and we shrink the chart a bit to position the one level, notice that the price came pretty close to this level in terms of timing. Here is the price came pretty close. However, it did not manage to reach that level. It only reached the double zero level at 1.03. So probably uh, the Euro dollar is not a very bright example uh, of the, of, uh, of a round number, uh, a, an example of a whole number levels. But a good example of this is the American dollar Japanese yen forex pair. I think, uh, which recently was in the in the 100 area, I believe, and I'm going to show you this right now. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, I love that. All right, great. So I'm I'm going to simply like uh, replicate this chart, and I'm going to open it in white template because I want to make it like more visible. Since I changed the color of my level, uh, here it is. Chart window. Load template, white bright. Here it is. 
So we have the American dollar, Japanese yen forex pair. So what I'm talking about is that the price approached the 100 level right here, uh, somewhere at the middle or at the end of 2016. And it shows, this chart, the way that the psychological factor could actually uh, impact to the global market players. Notice the price tested it one, two, three, four times or even more. Bounced in bullish direction, did not manage to break it. The reason for this is that the global mass of traders and market participants in, in general and trading like uh, institutions and governments and trading funds and so on and so forth and companies and whoever else is participating in the market, they did not believe that the American dollar, Japanese yen will go below 100. This is when the global change of altitudes occurred and the market participants simply changed their altitude. There you go. One, two, three times the price bounced and the price of the American dollar Japanese and did not manage to go below 100. Now let's try some Fibonacci stuff. Uh, if we take this bearish trend, actually I'm not sure that this is the exact trend. This could be taken like, uh, yeah, we have some like action in the 61.8 level and then some action in the 38.2, but this is not very accurate. So I, I cannot guarantee you that this is a right example of this case. So I'm going to simply like switch to another, uh, I mean, I'm going to, uh, I mean, I'm going to zoom in that chart and try to approach another situation. Um, hmm. Let's check this trend. All right, there you go. That's a bullish trend of the American dollar Japanese yen forex pair. Notice that the price increases consistently. Then the price reverses, bounces one time from the 38.2 Fibonacci level, second time, and then the price breaks that level, tests it as a resistance over here, Attempts to test the 61.8 level, but did not reach it, and the price simply uh, here it starts consolidating. But I mean, here and here we can say that the price is pretty much reflected by the size of the previous trend. But when the price like starts too much of a consolidation, we can say that probably the the magnetic power of the trend is uh, already done. But this is how you can actually discover. Uh, psychological levels with the with the with the Fibonacci retracement tool using this theory and actually this can help you pretty easy to uh, to attain like uh, entry and exit points on the chart this is the importance of Fibonacci levels after all because we should not forget that we're here to trade and uh, eventually to realize some profit and psychological levels are definitely an approach and a way that we need to have in mind when we're analyzing a chart technically. All right, let me take that trend to it, to see if it's going to, to match some of the psychological Fibonacci levels. All right, here it is. If we readjust the curious, because the trend, this is like a previous uh, impulse that could eventually be measured with another Fibonacci tool. Here it is. Bounces from 61.8. Here it is. Oops. Uh, and then the price creates another another bullish trend where the price reverses and retraces again exactly. I mean pretty pretty accurately from the 61.8 level. Then the price increases again and we see some sideways move. So now let me measure this trend and to see if it's gonna match the 38.2 level. Yeah, it matches the 38.2 level and the price tests it one. Second time, create something like a, a triangle pattern right over here, something like that. Here it is, breaks the triangle, resumes the bullish move. All right, basically this is how Fibonacci levels work like. Uh, now let me apply a moving average to this chart. All right, 
which moving average to apply. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put uh, three of them. I'm going to put the 100, the 200, and the 300 moving average. So you will be able to make a difference. All right, let's try the, the 100 moving average with red. Uh, notice that I'm adding simple moving averages. Also, I wanted to mention that uh, the difference between, let's say, the simple and the exponential moving averages, like uh, there is a difference, of course, because it perceives candles in different ways, uh, the simple exponential and the volume weighted moving average. Uh, however, the rules apply for every moving average because uh, there is a difference between the moving averages. However, when you plot it one over another, you see that you're pretty much seeing the the line with the same altitude, and there is no not that much of a difference between the moving average. Uh, so this uh, this impact, uh, I mean, uh, this approach could be applied also to other moving averages. All right, 200 level moving average. And then the 500 level moving average, which I put with something like magenta or pink or whatsoever. Now I'm going to zoom out in order to be able to see more action over here, right? The 100 level. <laughs> All right, let's start zooming in again. Let's start from here. The three moving averages cross, a big bullish trend appears on the chart. Notice that the blue moving average, the 200 period moving average, acts strongly as a support on the chart. Over here, the price does not manage to break it. Over here, the price bounces from it. Then the 100 period moving average acts as a support. Price consolidates, bounces in bullish direction here. Then another support. However, the price creates a lower top and the price breaks the 100 period moving average, breaking then the 200 period moving average. Then the price tests the area around the two moving averages as a resistance, shoots down, then tests again the two moving averages here as a resistance, shoots down again, entering a strong bearish trend, and then it breaks the pink 500 period uh, moving average. <clears throat> Notice that the 500 moving average here, uh, it's not a big player as with the euro dollar for pair, but I'm going to switch to another chart to show you how it works over there. Uh, yeah, basically on the American dollar, Japanese yen, I'm able to discover more interactions with the 100 and the 200 period moving averages. However, uh, a breakout through the 500 period moving average will definitely be taken more seriously as a breakout through the 100 period moving average. And the reason for this is the 500 period moving average is smoother, more like distance from the price action and breakouts through this moving average are taken more and more seriously and have more and more meaning. Now I'm going to go back to the euro dollar chart. Here it is. And I'm going to delete all the levels that I built. And I'm going to plot the three moving averages. Um, the 500 moving average. Oh. The interesting thing is that I plotted the moving average. However, on the monthly chart, we don't have 500 period. So in order to see it, I need to go to the weekly chart. Here it is. Notice, since it takes 500 periods to, to visualize a single period, it takes like uh, 500 candles <laughs> to be initially built. So in the first 500 candles, we don't have like, like a moving average. It's missing. All right, great. Now let me build the 200 period. 200 periods uh, with blue, and now let me set up the 100 period moving average. Here it is. All right. Monthly chart, not good. Daily chart, here it is. Yeah, the chart that I was discussing, here it is. Take a look. And the example I gave in the webinar. So notice that after the price broke it, the 500 period moving average as a support, it entered a very, very, very big downtrend. Then the price tested it like one, two, three, four, five times, This the same 500 period moving average as a resistance. And then the price changed the direction and now it broke all the moving averages. 
At the same time, the price exited a horizontal range, which is something that we need to take into consideration if we're going to trade like in the wrong in the long term. Hmm. That's the range, approximately. Here it is. And the price entered a bullish trend. Here it is. At the same time, the three moving averages are lined up in bullish direction, which is considered a pretty strong signal, uh, bullish signal in this case. So basically, this is how psychological levels in forex trading work. The thing is that they are very, very important uh, when you determine your entry and exit points in technical analysis because the price could always conform to psychological levels in forex trading. And this is why I conducted this webinar, guys, because I simply wanted to throw you like a like a quick and brief brief image about these levels, about the double zeros, about the, the whole numbers, the 50s, and also the psychological Fibonacci levels and the moving averages. So I suggest that we switch to a questions and answer section. And in the meantime, I'm going to launch a poll for you guys in order to ask you how satisfied are you from this webinar. Until you're answering the poll, uh, I, will, uh, I will suggest that you think of a question that you need to ask related to this webinar. And I would love to, I would love to answer. And now, guys, please vote about how satisfied are you from this webinar. All right, guys, I'm going to leave the poll open for like 30 more seconds. Uh, also, I would like to let you know that this webinar is recorded as we usually do. Uh, it is recorded and it will be uploaded eventually tomorrow in our uh, webinar database. Uh, and it will be uh, constantly at your service. So you will be able to watch it uh, the many time you guys want. All right. So now I'm going to close the poll. All right. Closing the poll. Thank you guys for voting. And now I would like to encourage you to ask your questions. If you have any questions, I would love to, I would love to answer, of course, uh, some questions related to the webinar, eventually uh, to the psychological levels. If you did not understand anything related to the double zero, the 50s, uh, or the or the whole numbers, or eventually with the moving averages, I would love to I would love to answer, guys. So feel free to strike your question, uh, and I will try to formulate a decent answer for you. Also, I would like to remind you that tomorrow we are running a live analysis session again, so you will be able to see me live again in our uh, private trading community. I hope you're all members uh, over there, guys. And if you're not a member of our private trading community, then you need to be because this is part of your membership. Uh, and this is where we run the live analysis sessions. Hey, by the way, let me turn on my camera. Yeah, that's me again. I'm back. <laughs> so uh, I was saying about the private trading community, if you're not a member, simply request your access and uh, and uh, send an email at support at, at forexbolt.com where uh, you, for example, where you share your forexbolt email so we can confirm that you're a member. Uh, then your Facebook email so we can send you an invitation. Or you can simply like go, uh, simply write in the search of Facebook forexbolt trading academy. And when you find the group, click at join and you will automatically be asked a question. Uh, about what is your Forex Bolt registration email. And when you leave this email, then we'll be able to check you up and simply uh, let you in the group, guys. All right, I, I see no questions in the questions section. I start, yeah, I believe that there are no questions. You're pretty quiet today, guys, but uh, I believe there are not that many attendees currently because of uh, eventually the hour we're conducting the webinar in. Uh, and the thing is that uh, holidays, uh, I think it's Thanksgiving today, isn't Thanksgiving in the United States? Yeah, I am currently Googling it. Yeah, November 23rd. Yeah, it is Thanksgiving today. 
So whoever is like uh, who, whoever is like from America, I, I'm like I'm, I'm saying like a happy holiday for you guys. <laughs> All right. Well then, thank you very much, uh, guys, for watching. Uh, my name is Damian from ForexBolt.com. Also, I would like to remind you that we're currently running a giveaway for 2,000 American dollars for Forex trading. So feel free to participate at www.forexbolt.com slash giveaway and uh, you'll be able to start completing entries. Then the winner will be awarded with a Forex trading account with 2,000 American dollars real money inside for Forex trading. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope that I'm going to see you in the live analysis session tomorrow. Bye-bye and uh, have a nice day.